have a very unusual project here on the stead tonight. What's unusual is instead of bringing in a piece of equipment, I'm actually going to sell one. <gasps> a tool? I'm going to sell a tool. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So it's a Craftsman 14-inch bandsaw. It's very nice, and it's got this roll-around thing on the bottom. When I received it, is that it didn't have a... Now, on this side over here, I've actually taken off the uh, couple of pulleys in the belt because I was trying to describe it. It should have actually had a protector over here around the belt. And that kind of bothered me. I'd always kind of figured on building one. And you know, I decided before I sell it, I'm going to go ahead and put something on it to help in that regard. I really hate doing this. I mean, I really hate doing this. <laughs> It's not what I want to do, but here we are. Got the bug eyes out and everything. Well, working on getting that saw going. Actually trying to put a guard on the bandsaw. Well, couldn't find the right aluminum I was looking for, even at the steel yard. They didn't have the size channel I needed, or even close. I'd seen this before, and it's going to take like three cuts along its length to get this to the right size. And then i got to cut it in the other direction. Piece of aluminum. And I'm going to try cutting it on my table saw. I've done some pieces of aluminum. I really don't like to do it. Uh, I think it's kind of dangerous. Uh, it's not good on the saw blade. But there's, uh, i got to cut a long length of it, and it would take a long time with uh, my other tools. So I'm going to give it a shot here. We'll just see how it goes. If it starts going wonky or things aren't going well, then I'll do it a different method. But anyway, here goes. Okay, and you're enough out of the way. I wish I had some earplugs for you, but uh, here goes. See, the nice thing about doing the stage cutting is, see, now I can drop this thing on. I don't have to feed it through all the way along and be cutting on the whole way up there. Oh, glasses. Even though I have regular glasses on, my regular glasses I typically use for the wood, but when it comes to metal chips, they're a little more problematic, let's say. So, anyway, we're using this, and it's actually good to have a a shirt on top, a long sleeve shirt, as long as you don't have cuffs that are going to catch on anything. definitely has a certain factor to it. Now, you know, while I'm pushing that through, I keep my hip right up against the switch, so I only need to just bump forward and I can pop the switch off. And the other thing, whenever you're doing something uh, that could be problematic is get your reflexes ready to throw your hands away from the saw. Cut again. 
Now this next step gets a little tricky and I don't recommend it. I'm often back feeding my saw with wood. I'm uh, less inclined to do it with metal, with aluminum. Figure out what I'll do this bottom part and the top part first. Do I really have to cut both the top and the bottom? Hmm. That's an important question. That'll save me a whole cut here if I don't have to. I could actually cover that whole piece there. Uh, how much of the bottom of this? I have to. It's got a lip there. But this other side, I could get away with leaving that. I just have to cut this one down. Uh, uh, I like that. Let's work. Me like less work. Less work for me. I like less work for me. Less work for me. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, and the curve in this case should actually help us. Going on the other side, the curve was going against us, so this time it should help us. <laughs> Famous last words. Okay, here we go. Hope I don't bump you while I'm doing this. Okay, getting it right up against the fence. Nice and slow. Okay, yeah, you just stay put there. You just don't get too close to that saw. Yeah, you're just a little too close there. I'm going to move you away here. You know, keep your hands off of that, you know, and uh, watch out. The on-off switch is right there. It's right there. That's hard on the teeth. Okay, we're back up into regular mode. Now. So, thank you, Lord. We survived that unscathed. And we've got our piece of stock. While I'm here, something I want to say about table saw use and, uh, you know, what we were just doing here on the saw. And unless you've had lots of experience, keep your table saw use simple. You can use hand tools for stuff like this. Um, this could have been done with a uh, jigsaw. It would probably been the, uh, the safest or even hand tools. But, well, I just want to make it clear that, I mean, I've been using the saw since I was a kid. And not that that excuses doing things. I, I didn't think it was really dangerous, dangerous, but bad things can happen when you're cutting metal. Let me say, things can happen really fast, but, you know, things can happen bad with hardwoods, too. You really have to be careful with them all. Um, 
So you, you still want to push the envelope. <laughs> so, oh, hopefully enough said. I don't be a safety sally, but you know, I don't, I don't recommend such techniques. Okay, <laughs> it's best if you do it a different way. Anyhow, I just want to make it clear on the saw. Enough said. Enough said. Now it's time to uh, take this aluminum piece and sand it flush. The part that we cut, one of the cuts, it's, you know, sticking out quite a bit. I do uh, did decide I have to cut the other side of it. Now I was thinking that I could leave it to full width. And uh, you know, many times when you try to then make a shortcut later in a project. You're often not thinking through all the items that you thought through in the first place. And one of the reasons this had to be narrow was to allow me to remove the pulley. You know, to take all this out of here, I'd need to remove a pulley, which means this can only stick in about a half an inch. So I will have to cut that down. So that's the general idea. I'll go ahead with that. Okay, now for a quick, uh, quick whack at taking off this other side here. We've uh, taken the back off this, sanded it, filed it a little bit so it doesn't tear my fence up. Took a hand file on it, keep from scratching up the fence. One tip I want to point out before uh, heading off here on this is when you do any pull technique on your table saw, okay, you know, I, I've had to do it a lot with pieces of wood and such. Um, now, often you get a lot of vibration. If you try to pull it straight through, you get a lot of vibration up at the head. And the problem is that that can, your blade catches the wood and such, and it can cause it to, you know, you get into a certain mode, and you can, that's when it can grab and really get, cause you a problem. So you want to be sure the cutting stays smooth. Okay, so you want to reduce the oscillations that are happening. While I'm pulling it through, this, this hand is pushing down. This hand back here is lifting. So what I'm doing is curving the pleat piece. So this end, that far end over there, is pressure on that end, which is going to keep it from vibrating. If you have it down flat, that can vibrate and catch. And it's more of a problem when you're doing this pull technique. Okay, so you want to, say you're going to push down here but you're going to lift at the back. So you're going to try to, you don't want to totally lift off the bench, but you want to keep some force on it so that the back end of this thing is kept from vibrating and breaking into oscillations. So you're going to, and you kind of adjust that as you're going, but that's the general thing. You're pushing down there and you're pulling there. And of course, like always with the table saw, is always be ready if something really goes bad, which, you know, right when it goes like that and it's going to throw your chunk of material, be ready to just close your eyes, get your hands out of the way, <laughs> let the chips let the chips fly as they may. There, there are times to do that. Just get out of the way before it rips itself out of your hands and tears you up or blinds you or whatever. Keep your hand away from it. So anyway, again, we're applying pressure here. We're lifting at the back. So that's how we did it, going through it. So this will be cleaned up. We've got our piece of stock. Pretty uh, grimsly piece of material, but it'll work for uh, what we need it for. That's all I needed when I went to look for a piece. I knew this was going to be a headache. So now I've got the stock I need to make that make that piece. <coughs> well, now I take these pieces and I decided, you know, it's got this foam in it. It's really tough to get out of here. Um, it's just part of an awning. And this foam was what the steel in the inside of here pressed up against there. So obviously it's not going to come out with water. It's been sitting outside for 15 years. Um, 
little hard to scrape off. I'm going to scrape it off a little more before I try to dunk it. But I'm going to, uh, just want to show you, I've decided I'm going to dunk it in some acetone to get all the rest of the residues off of it. And so I just grabbed an old can. It's a turpentine can. Oh, man, I love the smell of this stuff. You know, I never really used turpentine. I had some project, and oh, that pine smelling is just incredible. Now, I wish we still were using this like we were in the old days. And, you know, I'd forgotten all about it, but, man, that is nice stuff. I, I like the consistency of it, the way it cleans. It's, it's neat stuff, but it's, like, very expensive nowadays. I think it was, like, what was it, like 12 bucks or something ridiculous for one little can. And I needed a gallon at the time, so it was... Yeah, it was eight bucks. Maybe it was eight bucks. I don't remember, but it was pretty expensive. Anyway, so I used a uh, regular manual can opener. Just went around, took the lid off. Uh, the, that just blew me away. <laughs> Wait, where, where was I on this? Oh yeah, okay. Let's fill this up with acetone. Well, not completely full. We're gonna do the dip. Oh, it's the dip. And we'll let that soak while we move on to uh, doing some other cutting around here. Might as well scrape this other side here first. And yeah, let's get the big chunks off. Well, because I would like to paint this. You know, if I'm going to do it, I want it to look decent. Even though it's not even going to be in my possession anymore. Since I'm going to go ahead and sell it. See? So! Me like saw. Saw good. Saw cut. Saw good. Me like. You gotta make these uh, approximately one inch pieces here. Go around the perimeter. So I'll come to a full stop before lifting it up. When I cut the other piece, I lifted it up a little early, and I guess it must have been tilted a little bit. Grabbed the metal and just kind of jiggled it a bit. Intended to turn on the vacuum. Sorry about that. Okay. I think we got enough pieces there. Hey, this project has turned out to be one of those projects that's turned out to be pain in the butt. Yeah, that's how it is sometimes. Some projects are a little easier than you expect. Did I just say that? They're never easier than we expect. <laughs> no, they always seem to take more time and effort. It's the rare project that never comes out easier than I expect. And some of them are pretty much on point. I'm kind of an optimist. I'm always hoping everything's going to go perfectly. But, you know, as this old guy, some people call him Murphy. Huh? Yeah. And then some people think he's the guy wearing red leotards. Huh? With the, you know, pitchfork, pointy, no, pointy uh, tail. Okay, well, we're just going to sand these things. This is going to be a pain. <clears throat> but I don't want to get carved up on it while I'm putting this together, so... Just got to take off kind of the edges, some spots. And I'll hit it with a little acetone. Actually, being aluminum, it does, it does file quite quickly. It's got to hit you know, each edge just a little bit. Take some of the material off. I 
Okay, well, I'm going to move on with the rest of this. Yeah, I'd like to go into hyperspeed. Let's do that. Yeah, I think I'm going to shift into hyperspeed here. Let's start going faster. Faster and faster. Work faster! Faster! Got to go faster! Got to go faster! Faster! faster. <laughs> Coming out of hyperdrive as we as we finish up this last one. Oh, oh, oh! Gotta get it done. <sighs> okay, okay. Those are all cut out. Next. Okay, so we started mounting the uh, flanges onto the side plates of this. I've only got a couple rivets in this, and I've uh, just attached the other side with clamps. Oh, never mind. That's why they're called pop rivets. Look at how fast that is. Just pop those babies in there. Okay, we got two more holes left here and here. So I got to go uh, get those holes drilled out. But otherwise, we've got a nice little, uh, nice little unit there. So far, now as you can see here, we're kind of making progress, wrapping these things around. Um, so I had the quickest way to do it was just for me to hold these in place and drill through them. Okay, of course I got the camera going. Uh, when you put in the first rivet, don't drive it all the way down, just snug it up a little bit. Okay, and then you're going to get your second rivet. Otherwise, if you snug the first one up, the second one may not line up. So you want to just get the first one just slightly compressed. Then you drive the second one all the way, and then you come back to the first one. Drive it the rest of the way. So you see what we're doing there? And I'm just going to continue the process around the rest of that side and then on the other side. And we're back to our riveting adventure. Did RH make it around the corner? How many rivets did he use? Does it fit? And here we are. Okay, so the rivets are in. Pieces are in there. It'll prevent little fingers from being able to get around here. A little bit of gaps, but uh, not so much that someone can uh, get in there and have a problem. And then there's a piece that'll go over the top here that I have to cut out. Here we hit it with a little scotch bright pad. Grab the spray can. Over so there getting the paint. Look at the primer. If I decided to prime it, and uh, I wouldn't even have enough primer left. That's like bizarre. Usually I've got so many cans of paint. Lots of primer. And I've kind of been uh, burning through it, not replenishing. Trying to use up some of the things I've got. I'll mix really well. I'm going to try to get down in the cracks first. And you kind of look around, just see if you miss spots. I'm going to have to say it this way. Look around and see what spots you've missed. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay, now I'll uh, head on over there to the ladder. It looks like a perfect spot to be hanging it from. Nothing's dripping, so I have to worry about that. Okay, we're here cutting the the other side of the protecting protection shield, yes. 
So I remarked it. You know, originally I had a different plan here of folding these tabs over and that, but uh, it made it difficult to get into. So, uh, and I didn't want to cut just the middle of that out because I'd have all this waste material. So, I'm gonna, so I remarked it over at the side here. It's, it's hard to start them with your. Uh, how much of a curve. Okay, that's not too bad. All I have to clean up once. If it looks right, it is right. Is that what they say? That looks right. Okay, now, this is a pretty rough uh, sander. What I'm going to use now is a file go around the peripheral edge and take off, kind of radius off this outer corner here. Takes off any burrs, but uh, also just makes a nice transition, smooth transition. Be careful when you do it, you don't have your thumb in front of the curve, because then your thumb is going to be trying to break the, break the burrs. I could use this piece of sandpaper, but I find I like the, uh, the results the file leaves. The sandpaper leaves a uh, scratchy context, It's because uh, it's like making small grooves everywhere. I mean, very fine sandpaper would be all right. File almost provides like a burnishing sort of a context. Yeah, what we're going to do on the uh, outside edge of this, we're going to use this marking gauge. And you see it's got just like a little pin that sticks out and you set the, the width and that'll leave me uh, getting them all the same distance from the edge, even going around the curves. Okay, crank this baby up. I want some more force on that thing. That's a little better. Crank it up. Yeah, it's a little better. Okay, that's fine. Over to the drill press we go. To the drill press. Okay, that just gets me down far enough. Okay, I decided I was going to use pretty small screws going into this. Because then once this other piece is dry on the table, which will be later this afternoon, I can go ahead and put it on the, on the uh, belt sander. Okay, we've made our course on the outside edge. Spot. Get this lined up properly. And we're going to get our dimpling tool out and make our little uh, dimples. Where we need them. To take. Accentuate that one. Okay. That's it. Now we can paint. Give it a little scotch brighty. So. And do the top. I like to hit all the uh, ed edges first. If I hit the edges last, then I'm over spraying over the other, and I'll end up with areas that are rough on it. 
So if I do the edges first, then I can feather that in when I do the top part and come out a little better. I actually used to do quite a bit of painting when I was, I grew up, I uh, did a lot of radio control models. I was first to control line and then, uh, then I got into radio control and to race, uh, pylon racing and I did uh, win competitions and then used to compete in also uh, with, uh, trying to concentrate on two things. Um, I had sailplanes. I was thinking of slope soaring, but I didn't compete in slope soaring. It was a sailplanes. I used to design my own sailplanes and some of my own radio gear. That was fun. But anyway, I used to do a lot of painting. You want to have good lighting. The lighting here is pretty good. I'm kind of facing to where I have a big light right over there so it can reflect off it and I can move around. And I can, uh, you know, pick up. Uh, it's, you can move it so that you see the light coming across your surface, so you can see where there's any aberrations, missing paint, difference in thickness, that sort of thing. Now we just gotta wait. I can't stand waiting. I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. Okay. Okay. Here we are with the shroud on it. The finger guard. Looks pretty nice, except for when the head falls down. It's not perfect, but uh, hey, don't do what's needed. You know, I may just keep this thing. <laughs> Put this much work into it. Well, let me show you how she runs. Okay. There we go. Oh man, it's not smooth. Can you believe that? Oh wow, it's so quiet. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's not on yet. <laughs> there you go. Yeehaw! That's so smooth and no fingery places to get in there. So the bandsaw is ready to rock and rip and cross and cut and cross cut. Got about uh, I think five different blades for it from one eighth inch to the half an inch blade. And this has the large one and a half horsepower motor. To help it rip through anything. So here we go amidst the flurry of projects. But this one's done. So I can now roll it away. Put its cover back on it. Alright here. Hasta le proyecto. Signing off.